This video is on network types and characteristics. There are multiple network types and its characteristics you need to memorize for the Network Plus exam. First, you have peer-to-peer. -peer. P2P is simplest network that is created when two or more devices like PCs are connected and configured to share resources without going through a separate server computer. It is a decentralized network because resources and administration are handled locally on each participating machine. Each computer on this type of network may allow or deny access to other computers as access to data and resources is controlled on each machine. Because users can control access to files and resources on their computer, network admin isn't controlled by one person. As such, P2P networks are generally used in small deployments and in situations where security isn't a major concern, as in the case of home networks or small businesses. Next, we have client-server. This network is where client access resources and services from a central computer via either LAN or WAN, such as the internet. Client-server networks are computer networks that use a dedicated computer or server to store data, manage, provide resources, and control user access. This server or computer acts as a central point on the network upon which the other computers connect to. A computer that connects to the server is called a client. A client-server networks are similar to P2P in principle, with the distinction that only one server may begin a transaction. Clients and servers often have a one-to-many connection, which means a single server can supply resources to several clients at the same time. This is good network because single server houses essential data and centralizes everything which makes it easier to scale and manage. It's also easier to oversee accessibility and data security. However, this model can cause overload if too many clients try to connect to the same thing at the same time, causing it to either fail or slow down. Additionally, if the internet goes down, client may not be able to get information from the server. Next, we have LAN, local area network. It's a network limited to a small area like home or office and is usually confined to a single building. A LAN consists of computers, smartphones, TVs, tablets, and much more. A wireless local area network is the same thing, except it's not connected by wires. And a wireless LAN is usually limited to radius of wireless access point, which can be a couple hundred feet. However, this distance can be extended by linking additional wireless access points to the network. Then we have WAN, wide area network. WAN can be large as a state, a country, or even the world. The internet itself is a type of WAN because it covers entire globe. Within the WAN, there's a thing called MAN, Metropolitan Area Network. It's basically a network that connects the same city, like group of offices belonging to the same company. These are what you usually call Metropolitan Area Networks. Then we have Personal Area Network. Personal Area Network is a computer network for interconnecting electronic devices, within an individual person's workspace. Like your home, for example. It's a small network filled with personal devices like computers, tablets, smartphones, smartwatch. You get the point. Then we have campus area network. It's a group of interconnected local area networks operating within a limited geographical area. Campus networks are used in manufacturing, warehousing, universities, and also in corporate and industrial settings. See it this way. LAN is within a building. CAN is a campus that consists of multiple buildings. And MAN is a city. And WAN can be all of that plus more. Then we have Storage Area Network. Storage Area Network is a dedicated independent high-speed network that interconnects and delivers shared pools of storage devices to multiple servers. Each server can access shared storage as if it were a drive directly attached to the server. Then we have Software Defined Wide Area Network. Software Defined Wide Area Network is a virtualized service that connects and extends enterprise networks over large geographical distances. It provides centralized policy oversight, orchestration, and the ability to dynamically manage traffic. Traditional WAN was designed to connect users at remote sites to applications hosted in the company's data center. It was never designed for the cloud. 
The SD-WAN model is designed to fully support applications hosted on-premises data centers, public or private clouds, and much more, while delivering the highest levels of application performance. Next, we have multi-protocol label switching. It is a networking technology that routes traffic using the shortest path based on labels, rather than the network addresses, to handle forwarding over private wide area networks. MPLS can encapsulate packets of various network protocols, hence the multi-protocol component of the name. In an MPLS network, labels are assigned to data packets. Packet forwarding decisions are made solely on the contents of this label, without the need to examine the packet itself. This allows one to create end-to-end -end circuits across any type of transport medium using any protocol. Next, we have multipoint generic routing encapsulation. GRE enables the usage of protocols that are not normally supported by the network. And that is because the packets are wrapped within other packets that do use supported protocols. Encapsulating packets with other packets is called tunneling. GRE tunnels are usually configured between two routers, with each router acting like one end of the tunnel. The routers are set up to send and receive GRE packets directly to each other. Any routers in between those two routers will not open the encapsulated packets, they only reference the headers surrounding the encapsulated packets in order to forward them.